Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and esteemed scholars. I'm most delighted to be invited to give a talk at this prestigious Indian International Science Festival. I hope that uh, you can understand me uh, through the video, although I would have preferred to give the uh, live talk but as everybody knows, because of the circumstances, uh, we have to do everything remotely. And uh, so today's topic is, can Indian philosophy be anchored in modern science? To whet your appetite, I'd like to uh, give you the short answer right away. The answer is, it is Definitely, yes. Of course, in order to go into all the details, it will take more than one lecture. But uh, today, in one lecture, I can give you a little synopsis of uh, the whole subject in a short time. Any of you who want to dig deeper can uh, read my popular book, Code Name God that has been published by Penguin in India and has been translated into 12 languages in the world. And uh, you'll find many of the details there, uh, but at least I'll try to give you some perception of what we're talking about. It's fair to assume that uh, all of you here know the ancient Indian philosophy based on Vedic traditions. And uh, it is a long winding ways that the way the intellectuals of the Vedic civilization came to the, uh, to form the Indian philosophy. And uh, the essence of it can be expressed in three short uh, verses, namely, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. Tattvam Osi, you are also that. Sarbang Khalidang Brahma. Brahma, the source, exists being inseparably intertwined with everything in this universe always, thereby upholding and administering the fundamental aspects of everything that is in this world. And uh, now I contend that this can be verified or supported by, to a, ir really supported to a large extent by the very latest in modern science that is verified by experiments. Now, unfortunately, it needs very esoteric mathematics and uh, it's so intricate that many of the scientists even don't understand. But fortunately, the gist of it can be presented in a very uh, short few uh, words, which I'll try to do my best. It all started with the puzzling finding by the scientists that why all the electrons have exactly the same property irrespective of where in the universe they're created, whether at the very beginning of the Big Bang or in the ongoing astrophysical processes throughout the universe or anywhere in the lab in Stanford Linear Accelerator Collider or Batavia, Illinois near Chicago the Fermi Lab, or in New York, the Brookhaven Laboratory, um, or uh, anywhere in the world, in Europe and in, in uh, other places, Japan. Um, the biggest one happens to be near 
uh, Geneva, uh, Switzerland, and it's called the Large Hadron Collider. It is really a wonderful machine. I had the pleasure of seeing it and uh, uh, knowing the director, present director, Fabiola Gianetti. And um, it is actually uh, so wonderful that it could be called the modern day pyramid in its uh, extent and uh, impressiveness. It actually consists of a 27 kilometer uh, tunnel, circular tunnel that houses intricately designed magnets supercooled uh, by helium temperature on the coldest place on earth actually and uh, it uh, carries two proton beams in opposite directions accelerating them to almost the speed of light and then let them collide and when they collide it simulates a condition that existed only a mere trillionth of a second after the Big Bang beginning of the universe. And then the results of the collisions are analyzed by gigantic detectors. One of them is the CMS direct detector, stands for Compact Mewan Solenide. And this, actually much of it, was built at UCLA, where I am located and doing work in quantum physics. The uh, results of these experiments has been thoroughly verified by theoretical analysis throughout the world over the last 50 or 60 years toward the hype of the uh, beginning at the second part of the um, uh, 20th century throughout almost many countries in Europe and uh, Asia, Japan and other places and uh, garnering oogles of Nobel Prizes but they all verifies and we have come to a point after the last detection of this Higgs particle, some people like to call it the God particle uh, because without that none of us will have any mass, we'll be flying around like photons and, and, and nothing will congeal into our material body. Anyway, with that <clears throat> discovery of the Higgs uh, particle, we have completed what we call a standard model of particle physics, which is equivalent to the periodic table that we are familiar with for arranging atomic elements according to their properties. And these particles, which are about 24 of them that we have discovered so far, all predicted by the standard model and all has been detected, completing the standard model and uh, it gives uh, so much confidence that what we are seeing experimentally, what we are learning from it about the, uh, the universe is actually viable uh, scientifically uh, in every respect because fully verified theory and experiment agrees beautifully. But of course it is not the last word, uh, but at least this is the latest one and I believe the results of that corroborates the tenets of the Indian philosophy very beautifully. And I'd like to give you a summary of the results at this point. Basically, since it is the last word, so to speak, in our scientific endeavor of looking into uh, the, uh, the ultimate reality of nature. Uh, we can call the findings to be the fundamental reality uncovered so far, but as you know, science is open-ended, and so it is not the last word, but at least up to this point, it is all verified if there is any uh, further extension, this will never be undone. It will be expanded only. Just like Newton's laws are still valid, even though when you go to higher speed or stronger gravity, you have to use uh, uh, Einstein's general theory of relativity. And now that has to be expanded into quantum gravity. Uh, this, so uh, science is open ended, but at least what has been established, you can really rely upon it. 
So with that said, what I'd like to describe to you, what we have found so far is that the fundamental reality of the universe consists of quantum fields. Now, that is not non-material, but physical, but abstract. To give you some idea of what it is like, think of our daily experience of Earth's gravity. It is a classical field and uh, we cannot see, we cannot touch, but we know it's everywhere because uh, all you have to do is try to get up from your seat, you will find this force of gravity. But you, you, we go our daily life with, without even thinking about it, but we know it's there. But we cannot really feel it, only we can experience it. But this classical gravity uh, is a result of what we call quantum gravity because classical gravity always needs a source. Our gravity here on Earth is uh, due to uh, the mass of the Earth. But if you go to the moon, the mass is smaller. So you'll weigh one-sixth of what you weigh on Earth. But quantum field, which is from which this classical gravity arises, is exactly the same throughout the universe and have remained this, uh, with the same value ever since the universe began. Quantum uh, fields also has another property. While classical gravity doesn't fluctuate, quantum fields always intrinsically, spontaneously fluctuating with extreme activity. And this is what really is uh, something that I'd like to dwell on probably it is one of the most underestimated and under uh, 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 recognized uh, activity uh, that really gives the universe its uh, uh, all this phenomena that happens. In our daily circumstances, we have all the quantum fields pretty much separated, but it is the belief of the uh, physicist that all of them come from one single source. And that was the brainchild of Albert Einstein, the most famous scientist of all uh, the time. And um, he actually spent the last 30 years of his life working on uh, proving this, uh, his uh, assumption or his postulate. Uh, he didn't succeed, but uh, now we have come a long way. At least we have been able to combine, without any doubt, that electromagnetism and uh, what we call the weak nuclear force come from one single source is called uh, electroweak force. And that part is verified to any, uh, to any, without any doubt. And as a result, it has given confidence to all the scientists that after all, Einstein was right. And uh, so today's holy grail of physics is to find that unity of all things, all fields uh, of, that uh, Einstein dreamt of. Again, as I mentioned, uh, that uh, uh, that is quite intensive and a whole lot of people are working on it. Fortunately, we do have a, a theory, mathematically consistent theory, uh, that we call the string theory, that shows that indeed, mathematically at least, all the fields come from one source. But unfortunately, this happens at such a higher temperature, con uh, almost uh, or actually during the Big Bang, and we have no way of really performing that experiment. Uh, so what do we do? We try to see if we can predict some results which can be connected to the observed results so far 
that we have uh, uh, achieved, as I mentioned with the Large Hadron Collider that simulates tr trillionth of a second after the Big Bang. With that said, let me go a little more detail about these fundamental fields uh, that uh, are the source of everything. Everything is made of elementary particles like electrons and quarks and gluons and composite particles like protons which are made of quarks and gluons. So essentially the material uh, existence are based on, or eventually can be reduced to elementary particles. But after that, it is all abstract. Still physical, but all abstract. And these are chunks of energy produced by these various fields. For every particle, we have a corresponding field. We have electron field, we have electromagnetic field, we have weak field, and, uh, uh, and so on. So but 24 different fields and they have their particles. And uh, so interesting thing about these fields is that the fields all space all the time throughout this unbelievably large universe which is almost infinite in every direction beyond any human perception. It is as big as that uh, that light can, even light speed cannot connect one part to the farthest part. And so, uh, but yet we find what, whatever we look, it is exactly the same throughout the eons in its value. Uh, what we call these fields are immutable. It doesn't change with time. But interestingly, these immutable uh, quantum fields being present in each element of the air, space and time in the universe is always alive with quantum activity of infinite dynamism, which has the special characteristic that any particular event in the dynamism is completely spontaneous, intrinsically spontaneous, and absolutely unpredictable as to exactly when they're going to take place. The only thing you can think about some similar is something that our thoughts is random, spontaneous, and uh, what else do we know that really resembles this? To look deeper into this, that. Uh, uh, this activity of the field is only a slow motion description of what is happening. What is happening is that uh, the infinite number of these activities, spontaneous intrinsic activities taking place and the member of the ensemble having infinitely different amplitude and corresponding lifetime, all taking place locally at any particular space-time element and at our ambient conditions all 24 of these components of the fields are actually carrying out this spontaneous intrinsic activity all the time since the beginning of the universe locally. All of them are happening locally but this activity is carried on at every space-time element, again locally, throughout the universe from the infinitesimal dimension to the infinite. There's no place where it doesn't happen. There's no place where there's no quantum field in this universe. And so uh, we need to sort of use our imagination uh, and actually we see these activities become much more intensive, much more acti active as we go down to the infinitesimal dimension of this universe which simulates the conditions of higher temperature that existed in the universe. So these particle accelerators actually allows simulating 
the temperature that existed at infinitesimal dimensions uh, uh, of the universe, and that's why it weigh their physicist microscope. So through that, we verify this universe is made of quantum fields. They have spontaneous activities, and uh, in fact, with the maximum possible probability or randomness. And the uh, question is, in spite of this apparently utter random activity, how do these fields remain immutable? On an average, no change. Isn't that in interesting? How, what would you call such a thing? Well, the, since there is no, in this uh, uh, deeper level, there is no material substance, only fields which are abstract, physical but abstract, if they are fluctuating with uh, uh, infinite activity spontaneously, and yet they have remained uh, exactly the same, the only conclusion one could make is that it is self-aware. It has a self-referral with the quality of awareness and very close to our own awareness. And it would be fair to say that our awareness is part of that. And this is what corresponds to Aham Brahmasmi. I am Brahma. And in fact, these uh, immutable, always active fields present everywhere in this universe uh, with the co possessing the quality of self-awareness is driving all manifestations uh, and life as well as the evolution of life, culminating the most developed species of, that we are. Interestingly, we can see the existence of these spontaneous activities, what we call quantum fluctuations, with uh, uh, many different experiments, like the measurement of the anomalous magnetic moment of the electron, which has been verified up to an accuracy of one part in trillion, comparing the theoretical results with the experiment. Also, it can be seen in other effects like lamp-shaped, Casimir effect, but most graphically in the cosmic microwave background radiation. And this is everywhere in the whole universe. Everywhere in the universe that you look at, we find these fluctuations enlarged at the very beginning of the universe by the process of inflation that uh, allows us to see uh, the, that these fluctuations are actually real. It leaves very little doubt. In fact, these fluctuations provide the seeding of all the galaxies that exist today. And it is everywhere. In fact, if you have a empty TV channel, you see plaques. And some of those flags actually are this cosmic uh, background radiation. So this is a definite proof that the universe is spontaneously self-active with awareness. Now, one of the very interesting aspects of the activities of these fields are that they're always interacting with each other. So essentially, when we talk about an electron being a chunk of energy out of the electron field, it actually is a mixture of all the fields because they're always interacting because of the self-activity of the universe. So in that sense, everything in this universe, and including us, are always inseparably intertwined in their existence in this unseen, unfathomable universal field, uh, the, the quantum fields. And, uh, but humans have been here only for about uh, 10,000 years, civilized humans. And uh, 
Today, we live in a global technological society. Uh, still, our development of our brain through evolution has been only mostly for survival and uh, reproduction, but gradually we are evolving into uh, divining the more uh, deeper and abstract aspect of this universe. And uh, as I mentioned, science is open-ended subject and we'll, we will uh, get to uh, a stage where we can uh, probably it will be a daily experience by which we can uh, perceive the existence of this force guiding our life. And we can look forward to this day, but at least for the first time in human history, we have a proof, not the proof, but a proof that actually the Indian philosophy can be anchored in modern science. Thank you very much for listening to me.